In this video, I'm going to outline my exact thought process on how I would break into data completely from scratch. We will talk about what skills I will learn first, why they matter and how I would tackle each step. By the end, you will have a crystal clear picture of what it takes to get into data, no matter where you're starting from. And I will also include an interesting aspect at the end, which I'm not sure why most people don't realize and can make or break your career in data. But let's dive right in with the first and probably the biggest question. What skills would I focus on? If you are just starting out, it's easy to get overwhelmed, especially because there is a lot of content online on different tools. But if you want to make it really simple, there are two main sets of skills to focus on. First, there are the foundational skills that every data analyst should master. And these are Excel, which is still the goal to tool for data cleaning and analysis in many organizations and so you have to learn how to use formulas pivot tables and functions like VLOOKUP or index match then there is SQL which is essential for assessing and managing data in databases and then Power BI or Tableau which are tools for creating visuals and dashboards to tell stories with data and these foundational skills are the key of any data analyst career without this it's like trying to build a house without a foundation so master this first then there is the advanced skill set the ones that I always see in your messages whenever you say something like, Laura, should I learn AWS to become a data analyst? These are a list of tools that are popular, but still not essential to land the job. So this is why I would worry first on the foundational skill. And then once you master those, then you can start exploring things like Python, which is a programming language for automation and advanced analysis, Git and version control to track changes and collaborate on projects, machine learnings, which tools like uh, Scikit-learn, TensorFlow and PyTorch for building predictive models, then generative AI tools uh, such as ChatGPT that can help you automate and improve your analytics tasks, and then even cloud platforms like AWS, Azure or Google Cloud for managing and analyzing large data sets in scalable environments. So again, let me make it super clear. Don't jump on advanced skills before mastering the basics. It makes no sense to study in AWS if you don't even know how to use VLOOKUP in Excel. So focus on foundational skills first because they are the ones you will use every day as a data analyst and once you nail those you will be in a much better position to move on to the more advanced tools and concepts also another thing to consider here is that if you are telling yourself okay i will just learn three or four tools and i will be set right well hold on a second because we have to start by looking back and how data tools have evolved over the years to understand how trends shift for example i'm not sure if you know but in the 1990s most data was stored on mainframe computers and these were massive room size machines that could only handle basic tasks. And so assessing data was incredibly slow and required specialized knowledge. Fast forward to 2004, the focus shifted to tools like Excel macros. And these were used to automate repetitive tasks uh, in spreadsheets, which was a big deal at the time. Excel became the go-to tools for data work, especially in large corporations. And it was powerful, but had limitations, particularly when dealing with very large data sets or advanced analytics. And obviously right now, if you see someone working with Excel macros, well, I think there is something wrong there. By 2014, Hadoop became the buzzword of the decade. Companies thought it would revolutionize in big data by allowing business to store and process massive amounts of information. And at the time, this was groundbreaking. However, by 2025, Hadoop popularity has faded. Why? Because it turned out that Hadoop was complex to manage, required significant resources, and was eventually overtaken by other tools like Spark, with its faster performance and simpler programming model, or even newer, easy to use cloud tools like AWS and Azure. My point here is simple. What is popular now may not stay popular forever. And so if you focus only on the hottest new tools, you might miss out when the industry changes again. Instead, you should focus on the foundational skills that are very unlikely to go out of style, like the ones we said before, or even more generic concepts like understanding databases, programming basics and how to tell a story with data. These are skills that will help you adapt no matter what tools become popular in the future. So now that we got that, which path do I pick? The world of data is huge and once you have built a solid foundation, you have two main paths to choose from. The first one is specializing in a tool or skill set. This means focusing deeply on mastering a specific tool like DBT, Power BI, Tableau or a skill set like NLP, A-B testing or building data pipelines. The pros is that this approach makes you an expert in a niche area, which can set you apart and make you highly valuable in roles requiring that specific expertise. The cons, obviously, it's that is riskier because if that tool or skill becomes less popular, 
you may need to pivot your career quickly. Instead of focusing on a tool, you focus on learning the needs of a specific domain, like sales, marketing, finance, or healthcare. The pros is that this makes you a data professional who understands business problems deeply, and so employers in that domain will value your ability to provide insights that are directly relevant to their work. The cons is that it may limit your opportunities to switch industries unless you pair it with the broad technical skills. And so both paths have their advantages and you can even combine them. So specializing in a skill set while applying it within a domain. For example, you could master A-B testing, which is a skill set, and focus on marketing analytics, which is a domain. And so my suggestion here is to choose based on your interest, but also having in mind the demand in your target industry. This is pretty much like finding your Ikigai. You need to follow what you love, but also match it with what the world needs. Next up is how do I show these skills? Once you learn some skills, you need a way to show them off. This is why your portfolio or personal brand comes in. Think of it as your online home for your work. Personal branding has become just as important as the bullet points on your resume. Why? Because hiring managers increasingly look at your online presence to get a sense of your expertise and personality. You've probably seen that platforms like LinkedIn are evolving into social media spaces, much like Instagram or TikTok. And it's not a coincidence that videos on LinkedIn are being pushed more and more. The platform is rewarding people who create engaging and valuable content. But at the same time, LinkedIn remains the best place to network with professionals. And so we need to take advantage of it. And that's exactly why I started posting more and more videos on LinkedIn as well. And by the way, I'm a living example of how this works because I found my current job thanks to my social presence on LinkedIn. By consistently sharing my projects, insights, and even short tutorials, I was able to attract attention to recruit and professionals in my field. And this is because sharing your work publicly shows that you are proactive, committed and serious about your career. And these are qualities that any employer values. A lot of people finish courses but never share their work. If you want to stand out, you have to share what you're doing. For example, if you analyze a public data set, upload your code to GitHub and write a short post about what you learned. Pair that with a LinkedIn post or video explaining your findings. Employers will notice and it shows that you're ahead of the curve in how to present yourself professionally. I know it might be hard at the start because it was also like that for me, but trust me, don't think that if you post something on Online, the whole world will judge you in a negative way. I still remember when I posted my first video online, I thought my friends would make fun of me for life. And actually what happened is that I received a lot of compliments from them, which was kind of weird to see uh, on the one hand, but also really motivating to post more on the other. Now I wanna do a quick reality check, which is also super important. Let's be honest, data analytics is not a get rich quick scheme. The truth is that success takes time and effort, and data analytics is a long-term career path that requires consistent growth and learning. It's not just about the money or the ability to work remotely. If those are your only reasons you're pursuing this field, you might find yourself disappointed. And while this is not unique to data analytics, it applies to other fields like trading or crypto where there is often a false promise of quick success that doesn't actually exist. Data analytics is about solving real world problems and creating value over time. You need to choose this field because you enjoy working with data, finding insights and helping organizations make better decisions. The satisfaction comes from mastering your craft and seeing the impact of your work. Honestly, data analytics should be boring in one sense. You learn your tool stack, you practice, you keep up with some trends, but don't chase them obsessively, and you share your learnings. The exciting stuff should happen in the problem you solve, like building a dashboard that saves your company $50,000 a month, or discovering a hidden insight that changes your entire marketing strategy. Focus on those real-world results in your day-to-day -day life. That is where you have control, where you can innovate, upskill, and really get some returns. Then you take those achievements and plot them into your CV, your LinkedIn, or personal site. Over the next few years, that track record will compound, just like money in the market, but uh, it's about skills and experience. This is why it's crucial to focus on sustainable growth and genuine interest in the field, rather than chasing short-term perks like high salaries or remote work options. And so these are a few considerations that I would have if I had to start over my data analytics journey. If you found at least one useful information in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next videos. And in case you want to know my predictions for the data field for the next coming years, make sure to check out the video here in the link that you see in the screen. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.